Coming up, find out what will power the AOPA sweepstakes Super Cub. We take a look at some new tech from Garmin. Bringing aviation into the high school classroom. GA rescuing animals in Africa. Taking aviation adventures with toddler in tow. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudin. More than 600,000. According to Boeing, that's how many pilots will be needed to meet global demand in the next 20 years. AOPA's You Can Fly program is working to help with the pilot shortage. One of the pillars of You Can Fly is the high school initiative where aviation is introduced to students at a young age. Part of the high school program is a STEM curriculum where aviation is used as a teaching tool. And now the ninth grade curriculum is open to schools across the country. These courses include everything a teacher needs to teach. Lesson plans, PowerPoints, student assessments, student activities, projects, and so forth. So that a teacher really can just focus on what they do best, teaching. The classroom is the ideal place to introduce a diverse group of students to aviation and there's nothing boring about these STEM classes. So one thing we want to do is really create a lot of engaging activities for students that make it fun. One activity as an example is a cardboard wind tunnel that the students can make as a group and then they will design their own airfoils and test those in the wind tunnel. So really getting them to critically think about the work that they're doing. The curriculum has three pathways for students, pilot, aerospace engineering, and drones. It's a four-year program. Each year for the next few years, AOPA will roll out the curriculum to a new grade. The curriculum is free for schools to use, and you can read more about it and apply to bring the cur curriculum to your school at the You Can Fly website. And You Can Fly has a way for high school students to take what they learn in the classroom and apply it in the cockpit. You Can Fly offers a variety of flight training scholarships for high schoolers and aviators of all ages. The scholarship applications are open now through May 2nd. And you know, there isn't just a shortage of pilots, there's an even greater shortage of aviation technicians. A group of senators just introduced a bill to help. The bill proposes grants of up to a half a million dollars for organizations to train and recruit technicians. AOPA, along with several other organizations, sent a letter in support of that bill. AOPA is working to protect air traffic control towers at smaller airports across the country. Many rural airports use towers run by contract controllers. AOPA, along with eight other organizations, sent a letter to Congress emphasizing the need to fund the program. The letter comes as Congress is working on an FAA appropriations bill for 2019. The towers are essential for safety at over 250 airports across the country. This frustrates me. This is a, this is a program that's cost effective that works well for smaller airports and it's always on the chopping block. I, I actually testified a few years ago before the House Aviation Subcommittee when it was on the chopping block. Right. So we continue to fight this fight over and over again. It, it really does work very well. The, the tower here at Frederick uh, is open, what, about five, six years yep. now? And I, admit I was a little skeptical, but it, it really is helpful to have those guys here and it's a really cost-effective solution for the city, for the FAA, for local pilots. So it does work, work pretty well. So we need to keep fighting to, to keep that money available. Garmin, meanwhile, announced a new device to help keep an eye out for air traffic. The GDL50 is a new ADS-B in receiver. It's a successor to the popular GDL39. The device receives ADS-B traffic and weather, GPS, and attitude information. You can also get a model that receives Sirius XM. The device displays information on an iPad running Garmin Pilot, or it can connect to other compatible Garmin avionics. The GDL50 is shipping now for 849 bucks. And Garmin is making it easier to move your flight plan from your desktop to your avionics. FLTplan.com now integrates with compatible Garmin avionics. Just make a flight plan on the website or Go app, and when you get in the airplane, you can wirelessly transfer it to your avionics. You can also transfer your flight plan to your Garmin EFB and a variety of other EFBs from the AOPA flight planner. And more news from Garmin. It's made big strides lately in the fixed-wing autopilot world, bringing a variety of new safety features to the market. And that innovation is making its way into helicopters as well. AOPA technical editor Mike Collins talked to Garmin about their new GFC 600H helicopter flight control system 
last week at the HAI Heli Expo. The new helicopter flight control system uh, brings a lot of advantages for the uh, helicopter. Uh, it allows the uh, pilot uh, to operate the helicopter with a lot lower workload. Uh, we've done some uh, innovative things here uh, that originated in our fixed wing autopilots, uh, including our new helicopter ESP function. Uh, this provides uh, feedback to the pilot uh, when he's maneuvering the helicopter in a way that's approaching its uh, design limits. For example, in uh, roll, when the uh, helicopter rolls beyond 45 degrees, we start pushing back on the controls to let him know uh, that he's approaching roll angle limits. In addition, uh, we're providing our level mode. Uh, this is uh, similar to what we do in the fixed wing, uh, where uh, with a single button press, the pilot can engage the autopilot uh, flight control system and uh, set the aircraft to a uh, level attitude. So one of the advantages of uh, having a Garmin helicopter flight control system is uh, that it reduces pilot workload. So some examples of that, uh, when you're maneuvering uh, down amongst terrain, it's, uh, it's great to have the feedback on the controls to provide uh, orientation to the pilot without having to look inside the aircraft. Uh, and additionally, uh, it provides a, a workload reduction uh, so that the pilot can focus on the tasks at hand. Uh, for example, in a law enforcement mission, if you're uh, setting up in orbit, uh, you can automate a lot of that and the flight control system is going to maintain altitude and maintain the orbit over the point for you uh, so that the pilot can focus on the mission that's got the uh, helicopter at that point in space. Garmin expects the GFC 600H to be approved for installation in Airbus AS350 helicopters later this year. Coming up after the break, see why our sweepstakes airplane will be a smooth performer. General Aviation rescuing primates. And a family vacation with your airplane. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. This week is Women of Aviation Worldwide Week. March 8th marks the 108th anniversary of the first female pilot's certificate. To celebrate, women around the world share the experience and love of flight. Last year, there were nearly 200,000 participants. All this week, thousands of girls take their first flight in a small airplane. Old man winter is finally loosening its grip ever so slowly, but parts of the country are still getting bombarded with snow. And while flying in the winter, it is important to know what runway conditions to expect on touchdown. The Air Safety Institute just released a new safety video showing how to interpret the new FAA runway condition codes. An airport operator will assess the surfaces of each runway in three equal parts and provide a measured description of each third. Based on the contamination they find, shown here in the left column, they will then use the RCAM to determine the numerical runway condition codes. Now these codes may vary for each third of the runway if different contaminants are present, or if conditions are uniform throughout, the numbers will be the same. Let's say, for example, the airport operator observes that 70% of the first third of the runway is covered with one quarter of an inch of wet snow, 60% of the second third of the runway is covered with one quarter inch of wet snow, and 90% of the last third is covered with one eighth inch of slush. Based on the RCAM, the corresponding runway condition codes would be 3, 3, and 5. You can find this information in the form of a NOTAM or from an ATC facility, flight service station, or airport operator via the CTAF. You can find the full video on the Air Safety Institute YouTube channel. And I have to tell you, I need to watch the video because I'm still confused by the new codes. Watch and learn. <laughs> I will. <laughs> One runway where you can expect slippery conditions is the ice runway in Alton Bay, New Hampshire. It's the only charted ice runway in the continental U.S. that we know of. The runway just closed for the season due to warmer weather, but on many weekends, the icy airport was packed with airplanes. This unique strip shows the types of flying adventures that can be had even in winter. The Sweepstakes Super Cub is the perfect airplane for flying adventures in any time of the year, even in these icy conditions. We'll be giving it away with Tundra tires, skis, and floats. And thanks to a new engine, the airplane will be an excellent performer. AOPA chose a 160 horsepower Lycoming 0320. The engine offers more horsepower than the original engine and is much lighter than the 180 horsepower variant. The OPA members are automatically entered to win the airplane and look for the big debut at Sun and Fun in April. As you plan your flying season, there's a new event to put on the calendar. It's the first year for the young aviators fly in to the Triple Tree Aerodrome in South Carolina. 
The event is open for all ages to come and celebrate the next generation of aviators. There will be seminars, vendors, and a chance to fly in unique aircraft. Triple Tree, with its immaculate 7,000-foot grass runway, will not charge admission or for camping. The fly-in is June 8th through the 10th. And with warmer weather coming, it's the perfect time to plan a family vacation. EOPA Managing Editor Sarah Diener discovered flying is a great way to travel with family on a trip to Lake Erie's Put-In Bay. It's technically called South Bass Island, but most people know it as Put-In Bay. This popular vacation spot is one of three bass islands just off the coast of mainland Ohio in Lake Erie. Most visitors take a ferry, but the convenient Put-In Bay Airport makes the island a great general aviation destination. I decided to fly to Put-In Bay last year, partly because I wanted an excuse to get back into flying, and partly because my husband and I needed a vacation. Matt's always up for an adventure, so we made plans to fly to Put-In Bay Airport and camp for a weekend in the fall. There was just one catch we'd be taking our one-year-old daughter, Naomi, on her first airplane ride. Traveling with a baby is hard enough, but add a tent and camping gear to all the diapers and sippy cups and cram everything into a Cessna 182, and it gets even more complicated. I wanted everything to go well flying, so we'd actually want to do it again. The morning we left for Ohio was beautiful. Naomi fell asleep as soon as we started taxiing and didn't wake up until I'd shut down at Put-In Bay. South Bass Island State Park has a playground, a fishing pier, and a boat launch ramp. But Naomi's won, so the campsite was excitement enough. The golf cart we took downtown was Naomi's favorite part of the whole weekend. Put-In Bay is known for college kids and drinking, and there are plenty of bars on the island and plenty of drunk college kids in the summer. But late in the season, it was more laid back. Naomi got to play in the park and even tried Lake Erie Perch at the Boathouse Bar and Grill. When the first bachelorette party arrived, that was our cue to head back to the tent. We had a great time. It was just a short trip, but we proved to ourselves that we could fly as a family and have fun doing it. Now when we plan our next family vacation, it'll be easy to say, why don't we fly? Uh, thanks, Sarah, it looks like a lot of fun. It does. I've, I've been there before, years ago, at, at Put-In Bay. People don't think of the islands in Lake Erie as a place to go, if you're not, unless you live right along the lake. But Michigan and Superior, they've got some, and a lot of others too, some fun, some fun places to go that are easily accessible by GA airplanes. Yes, especially for those of us here in the Northeast, so. Yeah, yep. And finally this week, we leave you with some heartwarming video. Pilot Anthony Sari took the internet by storm with this clip he shared on Facebook of his flight with a baby chimp. Anthony is an anti-poaching pilot in Africa. He was flying the baby chimp named Musa to an organization for orphaned primates just one of the many powerful uses for general aviation airplanes. That's one of the best videos of the year, <laughs> I think. It is very, <laughs> very cool. GA serving chimps in Primates. Africa or whatever. <laughs> well, that's it for us this week. Don't forget to spring your clocks forward for the daylight savings time this weekend. We'll see you again next Thursday for another AOPA Live this week. Thanks for watching. the pilots who fly with AOPA Insurance. They love flying and saving money, just like you. At AOPA Insurance, we understand how you fly and provide the coverage you need to keep on flying. Call for a free quote and see which AOPA Insurance plan is right for you.